If you dedicated the next year solely to getting better at strong lifting, you would see much better changes to your physique than you would with your traditional bodybuilding or bikini training. Now, it is true, strong lifting is a strength program, but it's more of a physique program. And the reason why is most people don't understand progressive overload. They go to the gym, they do the same thing over and over, they switch things around too much, and they never get good at anything. They're not placing increasing amounts of tension on the muscles. You can hit each muscle from every angle and utilize the mind-muscle connection and get a pump and feel the burn you can sweat, you can be sore. Those things don't guarantee market increases in muscle mass. Getting stronger at the most important, big, basic compound movements almost always guarantees a better physique. So I'm not saying that every bodybuilder is doing it wrong, you know? Every bikini competitor is doing it wrong. The top people have the methods that work for them, but all these people down here, the masses, they should be doing strong lifting. You need to get really good at squats, really good at deadlifts, great at hip thrusts, good at bench pressing, good at military pressing. You need to be able to bust out chin-ups if you're ever gonna really develop your physique. And quite frankly, most people never take the time to do so. They don't put in the work. They're constantly distracted by new workouts, new programs, new workouts from their favorite influencers, new burnouts, new circuits, this booty band burnout, you know, the gym got a new machine, I'm gonna try that. They'll do anything but get better at the big basics. All right, what is strong lifting? So first off, I'm gonna tell you how it all came to be. Then I'll go over the rationale and rules. Then I'm gonna discuss some of the benefits and influences. Finally, I'll discuss the future of strong lifting. <laughs> So how it all came to be. So when the pandemic started, I started training my client Allegra like every single day. And we quickly developed a program which came to be known as the Allegra PR plan. Now you can check out Allegra's physique results. They're amazing as you can see. But what you don't see is her crazy strength gains. And I was pushing her so hard. We were doing squats, we were doing deadlifts, we were doing hip thrusts. At first, uh, she fought me on training her upper body, but over time, then she started pushing PRs on bench press and military press and chin-ups. Now, that's not to say we didn't do other lifts. We do all the lifts. We love all the lifts. I love all the lifts. <laughs> I'm a biomechanist. I'm a lifter for 30 years. I'm a bodybuilder at heart. I love every exercise. But some movements are more important than others, and so they should be prioritized in training. So with Allegra, she wanted to train glutes every single day. So it's okay. We're gonna have our squat day, and on her squat day, she's also gonna do 45 degree hypers and some glutes. And she's gonna have her hip thrust day. She has her deadlift day. And on the deadlift day, she does a single leg squatting movement, like a, a lunge or a Bulgarian split squat or a step up, and finishes off with some glutes. And then she she has her heavy hip thrust day where she does heavy hip thrust and then lockout work for the hip thrust and then some abduction work and more glute work. Then I'd try to get her to do upper body and then she'd cycle back around. So because of the frequency, I couldn't give her too much volume on any given day, especially given the fact that we were going high effort. We're going for PRs. And when you're hitting PRs, and training frequently, you can't bust out five sets to failure. You know, you can't recover in time. So what we would do is we would warm up. I'd watch her squat, for example. I'd see how 135 moved, then I'd look at 185. Those were her indicator sets, all right? If they moved quickly, I'd say, wow, you look strong today. I'd go, you wanna go for a new one rep max? You wanna hit a heavy PR? And she'd say, yeah, Brett, you know, 185 felt so light. Or she'd say, I wanna see if I can hit 205 for five. And she'd say, you know, let's go for a new one rep max. You know, let's see if we can hit 230. Or she'd say, I don't know, that kind of felt slow. I kind of feel drained today. Maybe we go for a record with 185. And on the day she really didn't look good, the days were 135 and 185 moved real slowly. Then I'd say, all right, let's just hit a PR with 135. You haven't done that in a long time, that'll be easy for you. You know, maybe she hit 15 reps the last time she did 135 pound squats. Well, she's gained a lot of strength since then. She can easily hit 135 for 16 or 17 or 18, even though she's not feeling up for it that day. So we kind of saved the high rep PRs for days she wasn't feeling that good. So she'd still hit a PR and still feel productive. It was good for the psyche. Then the next day, all right, warms up on the deadlift. All right, if, it look, if things look crisp, if things look snappy, 
let's go for a PR. I knew all of her PRs at every different load. I knew, for example, with deadlifts, I knew the exact number of reps she had gotten with 185, you know, 205, 225, 245. I knew her one rep max. I, know, I remember the first time she hit 225. Then her one rep max was 260 for a while. Then it was 265. Then eventually she hit 275. And with hip thrust, she was always such a great hip thruster. During that first year of the pandemic, went from 500 to 600 pounds. You know, she put 100 pounds on her hip thrust and she hit 600 pounds when she only weighed 125. You know, that's 4.8 times body weight. So yeah, she could work her way up to a five times body weight hip thrust. And look at her glutes. Look at how her glutes changed along the way. So she made that connection. When I hit PRs, my physique improves. And I got her in that mindset and I got her involved in the process. You want the lifter, you want the athlete giving their input. You want them involved in the decision making. You want them to say, all right, I feel like hitting this PR today. I wanna go for this load. So you've got all these different loads on all the different lifts and those are all PR opportunities and she was seeing such crazy results that a lot of my squad members were saying hey what's Allegra doing you know I want in on it I said well we're doing <laughs> We wrote a special plan. You want in, I'll, 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 I'll give you the same program. So eventually almost all the squad members at one point were doing the Allegra PR plan. And their strength just starts skyrocketing, you know? All of a sudden I'm looking around, I'm like, man, I have a strong squad. They're turning into a bunch of freaks. Well, one day my client Carly, he's hip thrust in 700 plus pounds. And there's another lady across the country, you know, in Miami by the name of Katie Sonier. And she's also hip thrusting 700 plus pounds, you know? So, <laughs> I had this idea. I want to see who's the strongest hip thruster between Carly Petritus and Katie Sonier. Now that never happened, but that's what sparked the idea. Because the more I thought about it, I'm like, Katie's got a couple of coaches who are hip thrusting a ton of weight too. I've got a lot of girls who are hip thrusting freaks. What if we did a big hip thrust off? And then I thought about it, I'm like, well, why just hip thrust? Why not do a full on strength competition? And then I started thinking, you know, I've always loved powerlifting. I love squats, I love bench, I love deadlifts. But I never thought powerlifting is a complete package when it comes to the physique you're lacking in some areas. If you're a powerlifter, you're probably gonna develop decent pecs and front delts and triceps from all the bench pressing. You know, you're probably gonna get big quads from all the squatting. You know, your hammies might be well developed because of the deadlifting. You'd think that powerlifters would have amazing glutes because they're squatting and deadlifting, but if you've ever been to a local meet, you know, I've been to dozens of local powerlifting meets and they're wearing singlets. You know, you can't hide your glute development. I'm actually amazed a lot at the lack of glute development with powerlifters who are squatting and deadlifting all the time. So I think, you know, you're missing some opportunity in the glutes. You're missing some in the lats, you know? Yes, they'll do their rows and pull downs, but they don't prioritize chin-ups, for example. They don't, they might do military press as an accessory for bench press, but they don't prioritize it like they prioritize the bench press. So powerlifting is brutal. It's really hard because it's, it's so challenging to get good at three exercises, especially given that squats and deadlifts kind of compete with one another, you know? You hammer deadlifts, you usually need a couple days off before you squat because your low back might be fatigued, you know? I start thinking about it, I'm like, you know, I love, I love squats, I love bench, I love deadlifts, but I also love three other lifts. You know, I love chin-ups, I love military press, and I love hip thrust. So this goes into the rationale behind the program. You think, well, why just these six lifts? They all lend themselves well to one rep maxes. You know, I also love rows. Rows are a medium to high rep range exercise. You try a one rep max row, you know, even like seal rows are popular uh, in Australia, for example, in New Zealand. Everyone does seal rows. You go heavy on them and you start flailing around. You look like a seal, you know? Your low back arches, your feet start moving around. You do a heavy bent over row or a, a cedar row, you're gonna use a ton of momentum and then it's not even more of a full body lift. It doesn't really measure your lat strength because you're just using tons of momentum. There are a lot of great glute exercise out there, but not many that lend themselves well to one rep maxes. A one rep max back extension or a one rep max lunge or a one rep max kickback, I just don't see it happening. Those exercises are better suited for medium to high reps. So the six lifts make a lot of sense when you start thinking about, well, they are very conducive to one rep maxes, but they combine to maximally build the physique. No stone gets left unturned. Military press is gonna develop your shoulders. Bench press is gonna develop your pecs. Chin-ups are gonna develop your lats. Bench and military are gonna develop your triceps. Chin-ups are gonna develop your biceps. Abs are made in the kitchen. Chin-ups work the abs really well. Contrary to what most people think, chin-ups are actually one of the best ab exercises there are. Squats annihilate the quads. Deadlifts work the hammies. Hip thrusts hammer the glutes. But squats and deads help build the glutes as well. And squats tend to develop the calves as well. The bottom line, all the muscles get worked 
with strong lifting. And you can't say that with any other strength sport. With every other strength sport, you're leaving some room on the table. So is strong lifting a strength or a physique program? Well, the answer is both. I use strength training to build my physique. I love getting stronger. I stay awake at night thinking of how I can get stronger at the main lifts and what strategy I can use. You know, I'm always trying to find the right assistance lifts or the combination of frequency, intensity, and effort. It's gonna maximize my results on this certain lift. I'm always trying new variations. I'm always trying new programs to try to maximize my strength. And I'm 45 and I'm still setting PRs. 30 years of lifting, I'm still building strength. I'm still building muscle. But you can be the judge yourself. In the year that I developed strong lifting, I have never seen anywhere close to that crazy of results with my clientele. And here I'll show off some of my clients, you know. I could roll through a bunch of the clients, but I think the best case study, the best anecdote is Ashley Hodge. Ashley Hodge poured herself into strong lifting and here's what's crazy. I made a post on recomping with Ashley and I talked about strength training is fat loss training and I talked about recomping. Since I made that post, she's further recomped. She keeps getting smaller and smaller but she stays the same weight because she gets stronger and stronger. The stronger you get at any given body weight, the smaller you become because at equal weights, muscle takes up less space than fat. So as you're recomping, building muscle and losing fat simultaneously, you build muscle in the right areas that make you look athletic. You lose fat from the areas that kind of make you look less appealing, the problem areas. So that changes your shape around, but you also get smaller overall. And look at Ashley here. In all these pictures, she weighs the same between like 131 and like 134. So I've put all of my clients on strong lifting programs this year. I mean, you can check out Amanda here. Look at her recomping. And these are accompanied by massive increases in strength. Look at Alexis. You can check out Gabby. You can look at Brianna here. You can look at Jackie. Here's Alyssa. This is Larita, Chrisanna, Tori. All of these ladies competed in bikini over the last six months. And what I like about bikini competitions, you get to see you know, you're on stage. You get to see the fruits of your labor. Did your physique improve, you know? There's no hiding whether it did or not. So yes, I train my bikini competitors as strong lifters. You know, they're doing this crazy strength training programs and look at the results. I had five glute squad members do their first show with WBFF this year. All five of them won their pro cards in their very first show. So went five for five, five glute squad members all got their pro cards their first show. Why is that? Because we train so much harder than the competition. And you can see that in their shape. My girl's glutes are amazing, but their backs are crazy too, and that's from the chin-ups. So with bikini competitors, I strongly believe that after a competition, they should sign up for a strong lifting meet. It takes their mind off of physique competitions and puts their mind onto strength goals. The next time they go on stage, their physique will improve because they got stronger. They built muscle. It sets you up for future success. Just some of the basic rules with strong lifting. All right, we have the same rules for the three power lifts as powerlifting does. You know, they did a great job. With squats, you gotta drop below parallel. That's deeper than most people think. With bench press, you need to pause at the chest for a second before you lift the bar up. Deadlifts, you have to lock it out. You know, you gotta stand tall and wait for the judge to tell you it's good. But with the three new lifts, you know, military press and chin-ups and hip thrusts, we had to come up with the rules, you know? So with military, you have to start with the bar touching your shoulders, you know, and you wait for the command. You have to fully lock it out. You can't lock it out here, you have to push your head through. Same with chin-ups, you start from a dead hang. You can't start here, you have to start from a fully stretched position and wait for the command. And then you have to touch your chest to the bar. It's not just getting your chin over the bar, it's getting the bar to touch your chest, it's a lot harder that way. And hip thrusts, you know, most people don't fully lock out their hip thrusts when they go heavy. Hip thrusts, you have to reach full hip extension and you have to pause for a brief moment and wait for the command. So these strong lifting meets, they're so much fun. We've done four of them now. The first one was in Miami in October of 2020. Each meet we've learned a little bit, we've improved upon it. The next meet we did was in December of 2020, just over a year ago today. And that was in Tulum. And then we ended up extending the trip and going to Cancun. That was was the best week of my entire life. There were over 30 of us who went to Tulum for the sole purpose of crushing it in the strong lifting competition. That day was magical. <laughs> I will never forget it. You know, I had so many of the girls, like I just have these memories etched in my head of, you know, Amanda and Ashley Hodge and Angela hip thrusting and Jade. But the craziest memory from Tulum was Carly Petritus. You know, it was just, you had to be there, but the hype was insane. She was going for a 765 hip thrust. 
and she hit it. So 765 is eight plates per side. I don't think people realize how freaking heavy that is. So she nailed 765 with excellent form. The crowd went wild. Everyone was cheering like crazy. And just to see the, the raw emotion come out of her, <laughs> you know, it was magical. And, uh, and that's when I started realizing, holy crap, I have the strongest female gym in the world of all natural lifters. They're all natural. None of them take steroids. None of them take anything. They're all natural and they look and feel amazing. That's what I love about it. They're, they're confident, they're fun. And you know, when they wanna diet down, they can diet down and get ripped, but sometimes they wanna eat a little bit more. They're fine with that too, cause they know they're gonna be large and in charge. They're gonna gain shape in all the right areas. Like I said, my girl's legs are amazing and when they gain some weight, they still look great because they're getting so strong. So you have a lot of wiggle room when you're a strong lifter. You wanna be a little bit smaller, you wanna be a little bit bigger. They both have their pros and cons. But yeah, we were eating a lot. <laughs> we were eating like crazy back then, celebrating a lot, going to dinners. We were having a lot of fun. But then some of the girls start dieting down and that's when it was like, whoa. Now you're seeing the fruits of their labor. You know, I remember saying to Jade and Amanda, like you girls, look like you could step on stage in like six weeks. You haven't been, been doing prep. You're walking around. You know, I've been training these girls for four years. I know what they look like typically in the off season. This is the best they've ever looked by far during the off season. So if you're doing strong lifting training and managing your weight, you don't have to do a 16 week prep if, you, if you're a bikini competitor. You might only need six or eight weeks, you know? And, and that's what I like too. I, I want people to look and feel good 365 days a year. So Tulum was amazing. We went on to do a San Diego event. This was in March of 2021. And this event was awesome because I think there were like six different girls who hit 600 plus pound hip thrusts. And then we did an LA event in August of 2021. And this one, we opened it up to the public and it was awesome because we made some new friends. There are a couple lifters there that just blew us out of the water. These girls saw what I was doing and they're like, okay, I want a piece of that. It's just so cool to, to make new friends and have this like-minded community. So training for strong lifting. Like I said, powerlifting is hard enough trying to build three lifts. But strong lifting, you're trying to build six different lifts. So our programming has evolved, but we've learned how to kind of maximize results by doing each main lift twice a week. All right but it's really hard to squat twice a week, deadlift twice a week, hip thrust twice a week, bench twice a week, military twice a week, chin up twice a week. So we typically do one day of, you know, the traditional variation, the standard variation, and then one day of a, a different variation. And a lot of times it's a lockout variation. When, when I say lockout, it could be a pause or it could be uh, like using accommodating resistance in the form of bands or chains. You see, one of the most respected strength coaches in the world is Louis Simmons from Westside Barbell Club. and he really popularized the use of accommodating resistance. In the literature is known as variable resistance, but it's basically using bands and chains, for example. So we've been using accommodating resistance on all six lifts. Yes, we will even do chain chin-ups or band resisted, not band assisted chin-ups, band resisted chin-ups. Bar plus band military press. Using accommodating resistance with bench press and hip thrust is easy. You know, there's so many different ways, but we've found ways to increase the range of motion, decrease the range of motion, changing grip, with, changing stance with, using different implements. We've developed a full-on system for maximizing your strength. And like I said earlier, I believe that strong lifting uh, is the best way to maximize your physique. You know, yes, you're gonna do your lateral raises. We do upper body abduction with lateral raises to work the lateral delts, but we also do hip abduction to maximize the upper glute growth. And we throw in accessories. You're gonna do curls. You're gonna do some rows. You're gonna do some leg curls and things like that. Those help both with function and muscle muscularity, but the focus is always on building your six lifts and your total. And we look at both absolute strength and relative strength. So both are, both are very important. So the meets are so much fun. There's over 40 medals we give out at the end of the competition. So there's all these different ways to win a medal with all the different lifts. And then we have the strongest upper body, the strongest lower body, the strongest pusher, and the strongest puller. These make it fun for the competitors. Sometimes you'll announce the winner and you'll see the person be so shocked, like, oh my God, I want a medal. Which brings me to my next point, the benefits of strong lifting. I've already discussed as a lifter, you know, you're gonna improve your strength, your physique, your confidence. But if you're a trainer or like a gym owner or a coach uh, of a lot of different lifters, you should start doing strong lifting training because it's gonna fast forward your success as a trainer or coach. You see, I have the strongest all natural female gym in the world. I didn't put out an ad and say, hey, I'm looking for the strongest girls in San Diego 
come to Glute Lab. No, these were just normal women wanting to build their glutes. They didn't come to me exceptionally strong. They became strong as hell through strong lifting. Only one of the squad members had ever done a powerlifting meet and that was Ashley Hodge. And as I showed you earlier, Ashley Hodge's physique made a complete change via strong lifting. So I have just recently created a certification for those people who are interested in learning all about strong lifting. If you found this video interesting, then you should check out the cert. You know, it's 300 bucks and it's so comprehensive. You know, my partner, Glenn Cordoza, he and I wrote Glute Lab together. But we've been working on this for an entire year, one full year. So if you're familiar with our book, Glute Lab, you know how comprehensive it is. Well, we were equally as comprehensive with our strong lifting cert. We've detailed every program that we've done along the way and how the training changed from meet to meet, you know? So we have training for Miami, training for Tulum, the training for San Diego, the training for LA. The programs always morphed a little bit and we explain the rationale. We also have separate programs we created depending on the scenario. We have the base program, which is the Allegra PR program, which is legendary. Glenn, my co-author, he's not even a trainer. He's a writer. <laughs> he went and taught a couple of his buddies the Allegra PR plan and they're killing it. He realizes he could be a very successful trainer because of this Allegra PR plan. He's more enthusiastic about strong lifting than anyone. I recently started training Ashton, my client. He's an 18 year old kid, but when I started training him, he was 17 and in just four months, he's now deadlifting 650. He's squatting 585. He's all natural. I mean, but you know, given the fact he's 18, I'm curious what his T levels are at. They're probably at 1200 anyway. The kid never gets sore. <laughs> never Nevertheless, he does the Allegra PR plan and his strength has skyrocketed. I'm really curious to see how strong he'll be in a couple of years. When I was coming up as a trainer, I would have killed to have an exact blueprint of how the strongest gym went about their business, how they, the exact programs they used to develop this world-class elite levels of strength. And that's what I've done. I've taken the guesswork out of it and given you the exact formula that I used with my glute squad. So what does the future hold for strong lifting? Well, I need to take it from like, it's a one man show right now, me. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm always at the meets and I'm the, the judge and the spotter and the motivator and the, <laughs> the coach and the organizer. I need it to become popular around the world. I need more people getting certified and I need, I want the sport to grow. I think it's a better strength sport than all of those. Maybe one day it could get equally or more popular than powerlifting or Olympic weightlifting or strongman or CrossFit. I love all of those systems, but for physique training, strong lifting is the best. So I think it should be the most popular in time, but that's gonna take a lot of time to get there and I need a lot of people to buy in and participate. So when you do these six lifts in the fashion I've described, when you train for the competition, you're gonna get muscular. Those strength gains equal muscularity gains. And if you stay the same weight and you gain muscle, that means you lose fat. So strong lifting can help you bulk up if you're eating more. It can help you recomp if you're eating the same and improve your body composition. Or it can help you when you're cutting by causing you to keep your muscle and lose fat for weight loss. Now, kind of this elusive feat in strong lifting is the 12 times body weight total. And right now, Ashley Hodge is the only one to have hit that. But you can calculate yours right now, but keep in mind the rules. You know, a lot of times you ask someone, how much do you bench? And they tell you what their bench is when they bounce it off their chest and lift their butt off the bench. That's not a real bench press. Or they tell you what they can squat and then you look at their squat and they don't even make it close to parallel. They're talking about a quarter squat or half squat. Given the rules of strong lifting, you can estimate what your total would be by just adding up. What is your max squat, bench press, deadlift, military press, chin up, and hip thrust? Add those all up and then divide it by your body weight. Like I consider myself a strong guy. I'm at like 10.5, you know? Getting to 12 is amazing. So that's a good goal for those of you competitive people out there. One day going for the 12 times body weight strong lifting total. Now I made a post on Instagram in January of 2021. This was like a month after Tulum and it was the average strength levels with my competitors. So it involved like 20 of my clients at the time, their average body weight was 142 pounds, okay? The average squat was 238 pounds. The average bench press was 135. The average deadlift was 293 pounds. The average military press, 91 pounds. The average chin up was 181 pounds. And the chin up you get by adding up your body weight plus the extra load. So that was like 
body weight plus 39 extra pounds. And then the average hip thrust was 542. The average glute squad member could hip thrust almost 550 pounds. And the average total was 1480. So that's the six lifts added together. Now that was 11 months ago. A lot of my squad members have gotten a lot stronger since then. So as you can see, these methods work. Another thing I'd like to see in the future is to add males into the mix. You know, I've only had all female competitions so far and I want males to be able to compete in strong lifting as well. It's just a little more daunting, you know, there's a lot more plates involved with the strongest men out there. And you know, so I'd need more spotters and better equipment. Now you know all about strong lifting. I hope I answered all your questions and satisfied your curiosity. Again, if you want more, check out this certification. I think it'll be fun to see people in their, in their bios writing like strong lifting certified. I tell my squad members, you know, get strong lifting started. It adds a feather to your cap. You know, you have one more skill set. You can help train clients who are interested in competing in strong lifting. And most of all, for the fellow trainers and coaches out there, I would love for you to experience what I have with my squad. You know, it brings everyone together. You develop serious camaraderie and, you know, when you go travel as a group and conduct these meets, especially if you travel to different cities to compete, you develop these lasting memories and you get really close with your team. And you know, it's hard in this world to find like-minded people. I can't tell you how much happiness and satisfaction it's brought to my own life. And I would love for other people to partake in that as well. All right, so that's a wrap. I hope I answered all your questions. I hope I satisfied your curiosity. Now you know all about strong lifting. Definitely check out the cert if you're interested. If you liked the video, definitely give it a thumbs up. If you have questions that I didn't answer, be sure to ask them in the comments. And always, of course, make sure you're subscribed to my channel. I'm gonna keep pumping out content every week. I've even started doing shorts lately, which are focused on you know, little tips uh, for glute building or technique corrections, and I'm sure you'll enjoy them. All right, that's a wrap. Thank you for watching my video, and I hope to see you one day on the Strong Lifting platform.